Hi everyone, this is Margaret Manning with 60 and Me. This is the place where women over 60 come to be inspired. My guest today is Kathleen Pedicord. Kathleen is the founder and editor of Live and Invest Overseas. Uh, it's a great publication and she has spent her, her life really looking for great places around the world to, to live in and, re and invest in. Hi Kathleen. Hello, how are you? I am great. It is so good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, I well, I'm just so amazed by the amount of uh, information that you we find on your on your website. I live and invest overseas. Thank it's you. incredible. And um, I think what's really important when people are making a decision about perhaps moving to a new country is whether they're going to like it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just a place to start. It's just like, <laughs> exactly okay. The, idea. the point here is to go and reinvent your life and have a great life, not to make things work. So, totally. Yeah, but sometimes, you, exactly. But sometimes you think, oh, I'd love to go to, you know, Panama. Um, but, you know, I think that you've made it really clear in, in your writing and your e-letters you send out that you've got to ask some questions first. And so, I would say you start, sorry to no, jump the gun, good. but you start by asking yourself a question. What do I want? Yes. What is my ideal lifestyle? Start there. And I recommend that you do it very formally, that you make a list. Okay. Get out a legal pad and a pen. I, I really am, a, I like, you know, I'm old fashioned. I've Me been too. around before. <laughs> you know, I like pen and yep. paper. Take out pen and paper and write down a list. What's important to you? And, and think about big things and very small things. What is important to you and what do you not like? What do you not want in your life? What would make you unhappy in a, in a life anywhere? Yes. So what are the kinds of things that would be on that list? I mean, first of all, you'd have to say, I want sun or I want um, you know, not temperate weather. Maybe weather is a really important Weather's issue for you. A, yeah. Um, I mean, we talked about this earlier, but maybe safety is, a, is an issue that you want to be you know, kind of reasonably safe. You're a bit adventurous, but you want to have a fairly safe place politically. Um, exactly. What else would you have on your list? I mean, the cost of right. living, of course. Right. So weather, safety, health care is important. Mm -hmm. And if you have an, uh, an existing ongoing health concern, then I strongly recommend that you only look at cities. You, only, you want to be in the part of the country that has the most developed right medical facilities and that's going to be the biggest population centers so you don't want to live in the mountains you don't want to live on a, a, an isolated beach which could be great but I think it's just not wise uh, if you have anything where you know that at, you know at any moment you could need to make a trip to a doctor or to yes. a hospital or if you need reg regular checkups for some ongoing heart concern or diabetes or whatnot then I really recommend stick with a city center beyond that you want to look at uh, infrastructure and this is uh, more or less important depending on what you're going to do in your life if you want to be earning an income in some way then you need reliable infrastructure. If, it's, if you have grandchildren you would like to be able to do Skype chats with every day then Absolutely. infrastructure is really important. Look at access, accessibility. So if you have grandchildren you want to be able to visit or have go back to visit them or have them come visit you. You want to be near to an international airport where there is lots of service to and from the place where your family or yes. your friends or whatever are. You know, Don't move to a, to a place where the, the nearest international airport is four hours away. Mm -hmm. That will just be frustrating to you. And also the cost of that airfare. And if it's going to cost you $1,000 every time you have to get to see your family, but you're saving a ton living in a new place, it balances out. So you've got to consider the both the accessibility exactly. and the cost. Exactly. Yeah, so also, what about the, um, uh, the climate? I mean, I, I guess everybody wants sun, but how realistic is that? I mean, there are, there's um, monsoon climates, just about, there's a, there's a time of the year in every place <laughs> where it's not there good are. weather. <laughs> exactly. Seasonality is really important. And I recommend if you find a place that checks all your boxes, that it, you really think it's the place, but it has some strongly negative season, uh, go and spend time in that place at the worst time of year. Mm -hmm. So Ireland is a great example here. Ireland offers so much, and I lived in Ireland for seven years. The, the first year what we moved there, we moved in November. By January, I was so sad. I was I indescribably <laughs> sad and depressed for no reason. I had just been married. Uh, we were living in this new country. Life was exciting. It was all great. Ireland was great in so many ways. I had moved a business there. The business was doing well. Yeah. But I was so sad. We took a trip in January for business to Nicaragua. And we, where we were was on the coast, the Pacific coast of Nicaragua. Within 24 hours, I was fine. I was my old self. And I realized 
It was the it's weather in Ireland. Yeah. The sun goes away in September and comes back maybe in May. And I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> I lived there seven years. I lived in September, England. <laughs> yeah, September to May, yeah. the yeah. sun might come up at nine in the morning and go down at four in the afternoon. And you can't even really count on seeing it between nine and four. Maybe it'll peak out. Yeah. And so that sounds kind of funny. And it is kind of funny, except after months of it, it's not so funny. It's kind of sad. Okay. Anyway, so, that was the effect it had on yeah, me. Yeah, so, so weather. You, so I really recommend yeah. if you are thinking Ireland, for example, go spend a month in Ireland in January or February. Or just plan to be away that month. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> to be somewhere exactly. else. Yeah. You know, we talked about another thing, which I think is a, is a consideration too, and that is how local you want to be. Um, and I think, you know, there's some really, that's a really good question to ask yourself, you know, that if you're willing to, uh, sh to live like a local, travel on the buses, go to the markets, you're mm -hmm. probably, and, and, and cost saving is one of your, your goals. Those things have to go together. Exactly. If you're looking to live on a budget, on a tight budget, and, and your uh, main reason for making this move is to reduce or control your cost of living, then you need to be prepared to go local, as you're saying. That's how you do that. That's how you're mm -hmm. going to get the biggest cost savings. There are lots of places, you know, most of the places we talk about, your budget is controllable within maybe wide parameters. Mm -hmm. So you can, we speak of a place where you could live on $1,200 a month which is true in many parts of Panama. You could also live in Panama on $5,000 a month. Yes. You know, there are, there are penthouses here in Panama City overlooking the Pacific Ocean where the rent is $3,000 a month. So it, your, your budget is very, it's, it's very controllable. Yes. So if you want, if, if you're not going to be happy unless you have what might be described as kind of an upper end, glamorous, more luxury level right. lifestyle, right. well, you need to, you need to be prepared for what that means. It means that your cost of living is going to be much greater. And if your budget doesn't support that, then you need to make some hard choices maybe. So the, the questions really kind of crisscross, don't they? I mean, it's like, if you want this, then are you prepared to do that? I mean, for example, speaking English is another um, thing to consider or question. How comfortable are you living in a place where, um, you know, not everyone speaks English at the level or the, the subtle, I think the right. nuance level, I think you called it. Um, right. I think that's, that's an important question. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if you really aren't up for learning anything of a new language, you know, you don't even want to have to learn 20 words of a new language, then I would stick to places where they speak English. And there are some really good choices there. Belize is a great choice. And that has both mountain rainforest and coastal and island choices. Ireland is a great choice. New Zealand is a great choice. And don't have to worry about language. If you're okay learning a little bit of a new language, but you don't, you're not, you know, at this stage of your life, being honest with yourself, I'm not becoming fluent in Spanish at this stage, you might think, but I'm okay, I'm going to make an effort. Then you have lots of choices. You don't have to become fluent to, to get by and build a life and have a great life, but you ha you're going to have to be willing to make an effort and put some, it, here, it's not going to happen by osmosis. I know a lot of people who think, I'm going to move to X, Uruguay, Argentina, Chile, et cetera, and I'll, I'll pick up Spanish. I'm bright. I'm smart. I've never had trouble learning in my life. I'll pick it up. It doesn't matter how smart you are. You, you're going to have to make an effort. You're going to have to put in some work to learn a language. Yeah. No, I think, uh, Kathleen, you said something there that is really, really important, and that is when you're making this decision to move to another country, you have to be honest with yourself. You know, you really have to ask all those questions like what location, what climate, what health care, what language, um, you know, how local you want to be. But at the heart of it all is just you've got to put your hand on your heart and say, I honestly mean this. <laughs> because when you get there, well, you know this. I mean, it's if you, you, exactly. We, You're we, the one who'll pay for it. What's the point of, of trying to uh, rosy things up for yeah. yourself and think, oh, I, I've never learned another language. I've never taken a language lesson in my life. I never even took it in high school, but that's okay. I'm going to learn Spanish. No <laughs> what problem. are the chances? No. <laughs> and so the, the only, per the only yes, person um... who is going to pay for that decision, that kind of delusional thinking is yourself. Yeah. So. Well, you are the voice of experience, though. I, th I think I read somewhere that you've been to, is it 50 countries and you've lived in... How many have you lived in? Uh, I've lived in four, traveled to um, 50 or maybe 60 close to by this time. Nice. I've started businesses in seven countries. Uh, I bought real estate in 23 countries, I think. Right. Uh, so uh, I've 
sent my children to school in four different countries. So there are lots of different elements to this. And depending on your circumstances, on your situation, the questions and the priorities are different. So when I was moving to Ireland, I had an eight-year-old daughter. And a year after we moved to Ireland, I was newly married and I was pregnant. And so my son was born in Ireland. And uh, so I had two children to put through school. Jack is here with us in Panama, still in school. He's 16 in high school. So my priorities are very much focused around the kids. Education was the number one thing. Yes. And everywhere we've gone, education was the driving factor. For someone at, at retirement stage, you don't have to care about that. A lot of people ask, for example, when they're thinking about doing this, uh, what about the political system? Should mm-hmm. I, you know, mm-hmm. what does that mean to me? How much should I care? And my general answer is, you don't really have to care at all. You're not, that's not going to affect you as a retiree. If you're going there to invest, then you probably want to pay more attention, more attention. But yes. if you're going there as a retiree at that stage of life and you're not making, you're not there as an investor, you don't have to care about the political situation short of is it safe and stable enough? Is, you know, you don't want yes. uh, riots in the street around you, even though that I've been in places where there was rioting politically associated and nothing bad can come of it. it can, yeah. That can be fine. <laughs> but if, you're, if that makes you uncomfortable, then right, pay attention at that level. But at a day-to-day level, for example, many Americans are worried, for example, if the political situation is socialist. Well, that doesn't have to bother you. That doesn't have to affect you. And and I would recommend not worrying about that at all, anywhere you're going. The economy, too, doesn't have to matter to you as a foreign retiree at this stage. The things that matter to you are very are personal. That's how you should think about this. Mm-hmm. So what view do you want from your bedroom window every morning? Yes. How do you want to spend your Friday nights and your Sunday afternoons? How often do you want to travel? Uh, you know, what? To, how do you want to fill your days? Think of this very personally. Don't worry about so much about things going on, you know, the political situation, for example. Think, focus more personally. I think that's really, really great advice. I mean, do your homework. And I'm, I'm going to um, close with just giving people your, your website again, because um, we haven't had time to talk about all the specific places that people could go. But I think if you look at the, I think, 21 or so countries that you have you know, written up about, wrote, talked about, written about um, at Live and Invest Overseas, Dot yep. com. Uh, people will have so much option to research the place they think, you know, just intellectually are the right places. And then, as you said, go personal, go deep and ask those questions. What is life going to be like really in right. that place? Thank you so much, Kathleen. I have, um, I'm very grateful for your insights and your, you know, the work you do for all of us out here. So uh, thanks Thank again. You. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Great to talk to you. You too. Thank you, Kathleen.